Hi, I'm making a video. Which is going to be weird because someone's sleeping in the other room and they'll think I'm talking to myself. Mm. It's Sunday, July 15th, 2007. I keep sucking on my finger because I burnt it. On the um, stove. I'm not... <laughs> I'm not used to using my stove. And uh, I boiled water, I had, I had a cup of tea, cup of tea, and then I decided to make oatmeal, right? Yeah, make it. Okay, instant package with hot water. And you'd think that that would be foolproof, but I decided to have the hot water on, you know, minimum, so that I could have another cup of tea after I'm done, or no so that I could make the uh, oatmeal and then have more tea. Good idea. Until I uh, decided to put my hand on a burner because I thought, it feels a little warm, which, why did I put my hand on there? But I didn't understand. I, I, had, the, I had the pot on the other burner, so why would this one be warm? Aha, because I put the wrong one on minimum. Now there's this. It doesn't really look that bad, I suppose, but it hurts a lot. Okay. I wanted to do a video response to Magic Shade Mask, the Rune de Garcia, on Belief in Philosophy, because she did a response to Odds Web who I will actually be taking this, like, responding to directly. And it's about philosophy and religion, about your beliefs. And this is an interesting topic for me that I like to, uh, well, I haven't always liked to talk about it, but that'll be part of why I'll talk about it. I'll answer the questions. I'll try to stick to the point and keep this under 10 minutes. What are your dislikes and likes about religion? Okay, first brief background about my history with religion. When I was a little girl, for a while there my dad raised me alone. And I was in an environment where, um, well, I had, even at the age of five or something, I had this searching inside of me which could have been because I'm, I'm a twinless twin. I had a twin that lived in most of my first year and she passed away. Well, she died. And um, maybe that's what urged on this searching. Or maybe it's like this book I read, um, why, why God Won't Go Away, that it's an actual brain thing. There's something in our brain. And the way it functions, it makes us search for a higher power or makes us want to make order or belief out of it, it, it structures our beliefs. I don't know. Either way, on my own, as a, a young child, I wanted to go to church. And I went to so many. The only one I never really go, went to was the Catholic Church. And I'm still fascinated. I want to go to a Catholic Church. Um, some, well, it's probably best I'm not a Catholic. Because could you imagine confessing 28 years? 29 nearly in a few days? 29 years of sins? Probably best that I don't become Catholic. My mother is Catholic, but not, not, she doesn't go to church or anything, but my mother's side's family's Catholic. My father, growing up, he was, um, an Orangeman and then a Royal Black Knight, so there's the Protestant, yeah, and I went to Baptist churches and, and, and um, I was part, when, when my stepmother came into my life, I went to the Salvation Army, and I was there for several, several years, and I just immersed myself in every part of it. Um, I did tambourine, timbrels, as it was called, songs, the singing company, and I went to corps cadets, and I read my Bible, and I went to church all the time. I can, I, I liked it. A deeply interesting religion because as I said prior to being forced to go to church I wanted to go out on my own I, I wanted to go to Sunday school I wanted to um, much to the surprise of my father who was not church going at the time um, the one thing about it was 
um, now looking back, during that time period that I was going to church all the time, like several times a week, and, um, well, let's just say that some children who are going through abuse um, rebel and do drugs and have lots of sex and um, just do certain things to, to, they do different things. I went to church. I used religion. I studied the Bible. I'd read it like, I don't know, I'd read two different versions of it, King James and New International Version. All combined, I'd probably read the Bible full. All the names even, even the list of begat, 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 begot, begot, whatever. I read all that by the time I was, I read the Bible several times before I was 14. And I read other documents, so I just kept reading and I questioned. I, you know, you get you, sermons, you're told things. If you read more than just what they've selected and you read around what they've selected or you read a bit further on, you're going to see some contradictions. And I would ask about that and I would talk to some of the people about that, whether visiting pr past visiting ministers or... I just had a very searching soul. And this led to me, I read a lot of books when I was younger and I just kept reading and I was questioning what I read. I believed in prayer back then. I didn't believe it would change anything because I remember praying for my stepmother to stop hurting me and it not doing anything. I remember praying when I was young, um, but I remember praying on the side of my bed when I was young and having, feeling a hand on my head, you know, on my head, and alone in my room of comfort. And you could think it was the hand of God or not. I, I don't know. I, I could have, you could, when you're that open as a, as a child, you can believe in anything, but you can be strongly influenced as well by what your environment is, of course. So I would, I, at one point I really thought that I would one day probably be a, a captain's wife and because at that time women could, could not be captains in the Salvation Army. I thought I'd be, I'd go into ministry and in, into the ministry. I thought that's what I would be called to do. Well, I moved away from St. Thomas, but before that there was a runaway, when I ran away or when I was done living with my stepmom, I went into a different sort of, I went into a different church with, um, because of my best friend's family at the time, Fatima. We went, I went to Apostolic Fifth Church, and I learned how to really play a tambourine. Um, I was a minority there, and it was a whole different experience, um, and a fire, and using the King James again, but just a whole different perspective for me, and um, the passion and how it was a clear example of how collectively people can be not just lifted up, but in well, if you, now that I'm older, I can see it as uh, think of promotional, uh, inspirational speakers, people who are called into companies to inspire a group, or just um, those you know. I don't know, those people that have that job to motivate you and make you want to buy their product or um, believe in something that you're, you'd be like, what, if you're thinking about it? Well, it was sort of like that, but I'm not, I'm not, that was probably some of the most, the best time church-wise that I had in years. And then that, I, I had to lose contact with that because of where I moved to. And I was drawn to a girl in school named Sarah who believed like we both believed and I remember us praying in a room really strongly you could feel like you, you, you can't deny but now I think it is something from within that we were putting out an energy together that we were putting out 